Hi everyone, my name is Jerry Taylor and I'm a solutions consultant here at Binary Stream Software. Today I'm going to be showing you one of our flagship products, multi-entity management, and how to handle multiple companies effortlessly in Dynamics 365 Business Central. So here we have my Business Central screen and multi-entity management extension is already installed here. What I love about the extension capabilities is that when we install MEM, it's built right into Business Central. So you're going to carry on with your normal business processes and it's going to look and act the same. Now remembering with MEM, we're running an unlimited number of companies within one Business Central company. So we need to be able to identify those companies, to separate them, and maintain any necessary security restrictions. So how do we do that? Well, here's where we're going to start with our dimensions. With Business Central, a key aspect for filtering, reporting, and tracking your financial information is based on dimensions, and that's where MEM starts. We're utilizing and assigning one of the two global dimensions, and that will identify our companies. So here I've created a dimension label for a company. That's going to be my global dimension one. And if I go into my dimension values, I already have six different codes with descriptions set up, and these now represent my companies. If I were to add a new value here, that would then represent a new company. So this window is standard business central functionality. However, we've added a MEM I call company setup window for you to add some basic default information. And we're not going to talk about every field here, but just notice you can add your legal name, tax registration number, picture, federal ID number. There's a lot of other fine tuning that can be done here as well. But that's it. Those are our companies are now set up. So now we're going to back out and we're going to talk about MEM specific setup and just an overview so you can get an understanding of how complete the security and the company separation are. So there's quite a few options in here. We're not looking at all of this. We're going to focus on intercompany and security features. So starting with multi-entity management setup. A key note in here is the assignment of our global dimension. So I said I'm using global dimension one to identify my company and that's now been assigned here. That means that this global dimension is now exclusively used as a company code. It's now locked in so that every transaction is going to be assigned a company code, kept separate and reported on as such. The next section here is security. And here I can start to determine the permissions that are going to be used for my master records. So I might want to say, for example, that not every customer can be used with every company. Or alternatively, I might want to share my item list across all of my companies. So here I've got a couple of selections where I'll restrict access to records by company. And again, as you notice, there's additional options for fine tuning here. Going back into my setup and the next two options cover security for users and master records and both of these windows pretty much work the same. So I'll just mention that the user list security is based on standard business central users. We haven't created an additional list of users for you to manage. They're one in the same. So here you're going to define which users have access to which companies, meaning when I log in or a user logs in, I can only enter transactions and see inquiries and report details for the specific companies I have access to. Any other companies that I don't have access to, I won't have any visibility to. It'll be as if they don't even exist. With master records, you're going to define which companies can access which master records. So here you can see our master record list, customer, vendor, item, location, bank account, and fixed assets. And as we saw in the last window, I can now allow access to this list of records across some or all of my companies. And I can also get very granular and say this particular company can only access and do business with this restricted list of customers in this case. So I'm showing you the one by one basis, but just know we up here in the top left, we have an import function so you can do mass update and setup. And that's also the case in the other setup windows as well. They too have that import functionality. 
So let's just do a quick recap. We've added our companies using the dimensions. We looked at high level setup where we assigned the global dimension. We talked about our user access to companies and we filtered our master records or not, just depending on your business requirements. So let's move on and talk about intercompany. Keeping in mind that we're running all of our companies in one business central company using these dimensions we've set up here showing on the left. Business central is never going to suggest our intercompany accounts. And so we need to be setting those up here. Based on the dimensions that we've set up, we're going to add our do to and do from accounts that will be picked up for every single type of transaction that MEM is installed for. Now notice I've got both originating and destination for AP and AR. And once these have been set up, MEM is automatically going to determine when a transaction is in your company and populate these accounts into the distribution window. They're automatically balanced on a single transaction window without any user intervention required. So this is a set it and forget it type of window. A couple other uh, items that I'll make mention of, if you have warehouse locations, including virtual warehouses, you're going to assign which companies own the warehouse here. And then you also have the ability to share warehouses with other companies in the master record security that we just looked at. If you have organizational trees, you have the you might have more one or more subsidiaries rolling up to a parent. And in that case, there's options for determining whether due to and from can occur between the subsidiaries or maybe they just flow only through the parent. So again, a lot of additional fine tuning that can be done here. So now let's get into the transactions and start to look at the good stuff. And I'm going to show you how the intercompany transactions actually work. And we're going to start with a purchase invoice. And the one thing I'm going to point out, though, is that it doesn't matter if it's a sales invoice or a general journal, fixed asset journal, whatever the case may be. With the MEM extension, they're all going to look and work and act the same as what I'm about to show you in the purchase invoice. So here we have a, a list window, and this is a standard business central list window. However, we've now added the company column on the left so you can easily see which company the transaction belongs to. And with the security, I'm only going to see the records for the companies that I have access to. So let's open a transaction. It's the same thing here. This is a standard business central window, but we've added the company field up here to identify the ownership on the header. And then we've added the company to the line. So while you might have a single company transaction as shown here, so company zero owns the invoice, they're going to pay the bill and company zero obviously is getting this expense. It's a simple two line distribution. However, we could also change this and I could have each line display a different company. And in that case, of course, due to and due from accounts would be required and they'll populate automatically. I also have the ability to use an allocation template. Now, if we think that because we can work with multiple companies in any one given transaction window, we've added a really cool allocation tool allowing you to set up unlimited templates that you can add to a transaction. And so here I've got my list of templates previously set up. And if I take a look at insurance, in this case, I'm basically saying my head office is getting an invoice and I know that I always want to allocate the expense across these certain companies. And so let's take a look at what this allocation template looks like. This particular template that I've set up, I've in this case assigned it across all six of my companies with this percentage as the allocation. And you can see the amount that's automatically calculated. If on this one off transaction, I realize I wanted in this case to allocate differently across the companies, I can make that adjustment and it happens only for this one example. I don't have to go back and update the original template setup. So that being said, that's going to create a few more lines of distribution. And let's just go in and take a look at that. So now I have a 17 line distribution. And if we take a look and open this window, here's my company code. And you can see I, because of the allocation template, I've now got an expense that's going across based on that allocation percentage for company 500 
and the associated do to and do from accounts. The same with company 400, company 300, company 200, 100, and even company zero, I had said, was going to get part of the allocation. But of course, there's no do to and do from accounts because company zero owns the transaction. They're paying the bill. And so normally you wouldn't be coming in here to this window and you don't have to. But really, this is just to show you what happens behind the scenes without any user intervention or manual processes. Based on this one line, it, it could really get quite complicated, especially if you're adding additional companies and templates on the other lines. But with MEM, it's not difficult. It's very simple. It's perfectly balanced every single time without having to go anywhere else into another company to post the other side of an intercompany transaction. There's no additional steps. So now that we've taken a look at the invoice, we're going to go in and take a look at the payment journal and we're going to look at making payments, paying bills two different ways. Regardless of what company a voucher is for, we can now handle that in one batch. And so we're going to look at both centralized and decentralized. So if we look at centralized first, perhaps your head office pays all of the bills. And in order to do that, we're going to go into prepare, suggest vendor payments. And I have quite a few options in here for filters that I can select, including filtering to do a batch on a company by company basis. But we're going to look at doing all companies centralized. And in that case, I'm going to remove this filter and say, I want to see all my vouchers due for all my companies. And when I say OK, it's going to populate whatever is available for payment. And if you notice on the left hand side with my company code again, I now have different company ownership in this batch. But as I scroll across, my bank account is one bank account for a centralized process. And this is the bank account that is assigned to my head office company. So that's a centralized process. Well, let's switch this up. And I'm just going to remove these selections. And now I'm going to look at a decentralized payment run. So if I go into prepare and suggest vendor payments, the process is exactly the same with one additional step. This is now this decentralized button has been added and it is a mem specific functionality. So when I select that and I'm going to remove my filters, now I'm going to have a batch where I have all my vouchers due for all my companies paid out of those specific company owned bank accounts, a decentralized scenario. So notice now I've got all these different bank accounts based on the ownership and what's been assigned to the company. And once that's been done, business central functionality is going to take over from here. So that's just a sample of what you can do with purchasing. Let's move on now and take a look at inventory and some functionality you might find useful here. We're going to take a look at uh, a transfer, so an item reclass journal. And when I come in here, I've already got an example set up and it's a little bit different. Let's say I want to transfer from one warehouse to another. And since warehouses belong to companies already, I don't need to assign a company code. In fact, it's grayed out because I've actually assigned my warehouse yellow to company zero, so that's already done and taken care of. Now I'm going to transfer inventory to this warehouse blue, and it so happens the blue warehouse is owned by company 200. And how do I know that? Well, if I go over a few fields here, I see the new company code is already defaulted to company 200, which is grayed out. It's assigned to company 200. Now when I post this transaction, that means it's automatically going to transfer the quantities, of course. It's also going to transfer the cost associated to this item and, and then calculate all of the due to and from requirements based on our original setup. So now let's take a look at some physical stock counts. We do have, I'll mention, we do have some basic warehousing with MEM already enabled, but we're going to take a look at a standard count. Again, I've already got an example selected, and as you notice on the left-hand side, all the different company codes, and you might think, well, if I'm doing a warehouse count or a stock count, I'm going to do it on a warehouse by warehouse, but I'm showing you this because you may have virtual warehouses within, in this case, the head office, and that's fine. 
So here we'll go into the filter options so you can see what that looks like. All the standard filter options are available. And so again, you could restrict this to one warehouse or another, and you can then take this and export it out to Excel so that your physical count happens and is noted, and then come back in here and make any necessary adjustments for any discrepancies. So we've covered some transactions so that you can see how that works. And now let's take a look at our reporting for just a few minutes. Here we've got a collection of MEM enabled reports and there's 50 at this point. These can be filtered by company and will uphold the user specific security restrictions that have been put in place. Meaning I can only access reports for the companies that I have assigned, been assigned the security access to. So I'm never gonna be able to see or a user's never gonna be able to see data that's not intended for them based on their permissions. So, if we look at the first reports in this list, these are all consolidated reports. And that means, for example, if I were to print the balance sheet, I'm going to get a one page report consolidated with the amounts. However, if I scroll down, you're going to start to notice some reports that have by entity in the title. These are going to be segregated reports. And so if I printed the balance sheet by entity, I'm still going to get a report for all of the companies I've selected, but now it's going to be a separate page per company. So now let's open a report and just take a look. I'm going to open the spread global dimension report. And I have my filter options and this is standard business central filtering. And in this case, I could select a company filter where I can say, show me in this particular report company zero two and three or zero three and four whatever combinations that i want in this case however i'm going to remove this filter and i'm going to basically say give me all of my companies in this one report this is a spread global dimension so i'll just mention that it's going to print a, a separate column per company. So if you have a lot of companies, that's not gonna fit on your page no matter what your layout is set to. So you can automatically send that to Excel if you like. When I come down here, same business central options to send to Excel, PDF, Word, or to the scheduler. But in this case, I'm gonna preview. So now when it comes up, I'll have a company per column and I'll just make that bigger. And then I also have a total of all of these columns. What I want to bring your attention to though is security. Up at the top left here, I put in a, a filter for company and said, I want all my companies to display. And if you remember in the dimension setup, I actually had a company 500. So even though I've said, give me all my companies, I don't have access to company 500. I didn't give myself access to company 500. And I'll also make note that I'm the administrator I would have access to everything, but until I give myself access, I don't have the ability to see any data for company 500. That's how complete the security is. We're going to take a look at one last report and we're going to look at a vendor trial balance by entity. And so because we might be sharing our master records across companies, you may be wondering what that will look like in this case. So here I'm going to remove my company filter and I've actually selected a vendor that I know goes across companies. So we'll take a look again to see what that looks like. And I'll make this a little bit bigger again. And again at the top I have my company filters. And now this is broken down by entity. So here's where the segregation segregated reports come into play where I've got company zero for Fabricam. And this is a unique list of invoices for my head office vendor Fabricam. Now, as I go to the next page, I've got company 100 also does business with Fabricam and another unique list of invoices. The same for company 200 and for company 300 only has one invoice. And then at the bottom, there's a grand total for what this vendor balances for all of my companies combined. So even though this same vendor is shared across the companies, you're always going to be able to track records per company, be able to reconcile and never have any crossover or lose any visibility. 
So that's a pretty high level for you of how Business Central and multi-entity management work together. It's pretty much anything you might want to do as far as managing your records and companies can be done in a single transaction window. Reports can be consolidated or segregated without having to do anything other than saying, these are the companies I want to be including. So all of this together becomes very, very powerful, not only by allowing for greater consistency, but just making day-to-day -day business process flows simple, efficient, and maybe even enabling better accuracy in the process. So that covers everything I wanted to show you today. And if you'd like to see a more in-depth presentation, or if you have any follow-up questions at all, you can contact your partner or our sales team, and we'd be happy to arrange a meeting and discuss any of those additional details that you might need.